It isn't Hildegard, kiddies. <laughs> The makers of Tenderleaf Tea and Blue Bonnet Margarine present the Fred Allen Show with Fred's guests Frank Sinatra, Portland Hopper, Minerva Pius as Mrs. Nussbaum, the Tenderleaf Workshop Players, the DeMarco Sisters, and Al Goodman and his orchestra. And to the lady who sent me the anonymous fan letter, my name is Kenny Delmar. This week, ladies and gentlemen, our victorious naval forces have been coming home on battleships, cruisers, and carriers. Tonight, another flat top has just arrived, and here he is, Fred Allen. Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Kenny, I hope you are celebrating the uh, fleet's return. Oh, yes, Fred. Well, New York has gone all out to welcome the Navy. Oh, I know. Last night, they had 80 men rocking the Asta Hotel to make the sailors feel at home who were sleeping there. <laughs> and in that picture at Music Hall, you know, weekend at the Waldorf, they took out Walter Pigeon and put in a seagull, just for the Navy. <laughs> Wish some of the Navy had come in to laugh at these jokes, you know. <laughs> well, uh, see, wasn't Jack Benny in the Navy, Fred? Jack Benny in the Navy? Oh, that was before water was even invented. <laughs> they had the H, but they were waiting for the two O's to come out of the Ark in those days. <laughs> you know that Benny is the only sailor I know who can get seasick looking at a bundle of wet wash? <laughs> Benny was in the only naval engagement of the Civil War. Oh, you mean the Monitor and the Merrimack? Benny was on the Monitor. When the lookout yelled, Ahoy! The Merrimack's astern! Benny said, Have them sing something. <laughs> you think it would have worked better with four chicks and a chuck? If it... <laughs> you know, Benny... If Benny was a... If Benny was a sailor... Mr. Uh... Allen! Mr. Allen! Well, Portland... <laughs> You're just, in, you're just in time, Portland. Kenny and I were discussing the arrival of the Navy. Oh, everybody's celebrating. Oh, I know that. Admiral Halsey was on Bob Hope's program last week. Yes, Admiral Halsey is braver than I thought. <laughs> Do you know why Admiral Halsey came on at the end of Bob's program? Well, why did Admiral Halsey come on at the end of the Bob Hope program? He's a rear admiral. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's, it's your joke. You enjoy it. <laughs> Tell me, is your, is your mother going to participate in the Navy Day festivities? Mama's going to be in the parade of ships. Oh, she's going as Hesperus the Hesperus, is she? No, Mama's going to wear her new corset. Her new corset, huh? Mama's going as old Ironside. Oh. <laughs> Say, I hope she doesn't carry the impersonation too far. How? Well, if your mother thinks she's old Ironside... She may try to back into some dry dock and get scraped for barnacles. <laughs> and speaking of barnacles, I wonder if everything is ship-shaped down in Allen's Alley. Have you a question for them, tonight? Oh, you bet. You know, since gasoline rationing has ended, traffic congestion in the larger cities has become one of the nation's greatest problems. And so our question is, how is the traffic dilemma affecting you? Shall we go? As the two sticks said when they saw the tom-tom, let's beat it. <laughs> ah, it's so good to be back in Allen's Alley again, Portland. I wonder if the senator is in tonight. Let's see. Somebody, I say, somebody's popped on my door. Yes, Senator. I represent the solid sound. Well, I know. I that. loaned Mason and Dixon the chalk the day they drew the line. <laughs> well, I uh... speak up, son. Out with it. Speak up. Up that ear. Well, look. <laughs> You'll never get anywhere staying silent. Well, if you don't just... try to be another Coolidge, son. <laughs> Look, Senator, tell me, how are traffic conditions in Washington? We're investigating. Congressman Coffee is boiling. Well, <laughs> well... Coffee's boiling. That's a joke, son. I... <laughs> Pay attention, son. Be on your toes. Well, I'm doing that. Yeah, best. you keep missing them, son. Well, I... <laughs> Senator, look, the streets are filled with cars. What is the solution of the nation's traffic problem? One, I say, one-way traffic. 
One-way traffic. Yeah, eh? Monday's all traffic moves only to the east. Yeah. Tuesday's all traffic moves only to the west. Yeah. Wednesday's east, Thursday's west. Uh Uh-uh. Now, wait a minute, Senator. What about the north and south? Son, that was settled by the Civil War. (laughs) Oh. Yeah, well, so long. (laughs) So long, that is. I heard you through the keyhole, Senator. (laughs) The Senator dropped a picture of Jefferson Davis. Oh, well, I'll give it to him next Sunday. Now, let's see what happens here at this next door. Howdy, bub. Well, Well, Mr. Moody, you, uh, you look a little tired tonight. Yeah, I've been on the go all day. Busy, huh? Yeah. I'm working for a tree surgeon. Tree surgeon? I go around leaving Kleenex under weeping willows. <laughs> Not so messy a feel that way, is it? Well, tell me, Mr. Moody, how do you account for this traffic problem? So many automobiles. It's progress, bub. Progress? Yeah. Hoover said he'd put a car in every garage. Yes. Truman's got two cars parked in front of every house. What do you think is causing the parking trouble, uh, Mr. Moody? Oh, it's the housing shortage. The housing shortage, huh? Yeah. Folks is living in garages and putting their cars out on the street. Well, how are we going to cope with this traffic problem, Mr. Moody? I'm a pedestrian. And your solution is? Every motorist should drop dead. So long, bud. Mr. Moody ought to get in touch with the mayor or Campbell's or something. Now, let's try this next door. No? Ah, Mrs. Nussbaum. You are expecting maybe Commissar Mazeltoff? <laughs> Tell me, Mrs. N., are you concerned with the traffic problem? Indubitably. <laughs> You'll pardon the expression. Oh, naturally. <laughs> Well, how, how are you concerned? Well, every Friday I'm inviting all my relatives for a big fish dinner. I see. I'm calling downtown the Fulton Fish Market. Uh-huh. Mr. Fulton is driving uptown with 20 sturgeon. Oh, the whole dinner is nothing but sturgeon, huh? Well, the sturgeon I'm cooking all different kinds of style. Oh, good, good. Sturgeon a la king. Yes. Yeah. Sturgeon cacciatore. Oh, that's... <laughs> Uh, also, Sturgeon Fu Young. Oriental. Sturgeon Burgers. Sturgeon Burgers. Uh, uh, do, you, uh, do you have, with the dinner, you have dessert? For dessert, I'm, stir- I'm serving Sturgeon a la mode. Stur- sturgeon went upstream in the sentence there. <laughs> sturgeon, you're serving Sturgeon a la mode? This is a baked and top is a cold station. A la mode. Well, with this traffic congestion, Mr. Fulton can't drive up to the Bronx, can he? It is impossible. Well, how does he get your fish uptown? Every Friday, Mr. Fulton downtown is throwing 20 sturgeon in the Hudson River. Well, how do the 20 sturgeon find their way up to the Bronx? Ah, Mr. Fulton is throwing in a herring and yelling, Boys, follow him. <laughs> Well, that brings us to the last house in the alley. Hello, hello, we're here to say hello. Just a minute, just a minute, boys. Before you get into your theme song, tell me, have you written any new songs for us this week? Have you heard? I put a blank check in my pajamas at night in case I have to buy that dream. (laughs) No. Have Have you heard? My Irene's the village queen, but she's always taking Ben to dream. No. We also wrote a blue song. Blue song? What is it called? I got the walking up Fifth Avenue, crossing 59th Street, stepping over the gutter on my way uptown blues. Now look, boys, look. <laughs> look, tonight we, we happen to be mulling over the traffic problem. We got just the song you want. Traffic song? How does it go? Get it, Sam. If you're a motorist in New York, you can drive your car a block. In the traffic you get jammed, and your rear end you get rammed. 
don't just get there at the wheel. Looking like a big schnamil. <laughs> Take a tip from me, use the BMT, and sell your old mobile. <laughs> If you'll step into the junior missus department, we'll meet the five DeMarco sisters. With Maestro Al Goodman at the baton, the DeMarco sing, the Atchison, Topeka, and the you-know-what. Do you hear that whistle down the line? Big of that attention on my party night. He's the only one that's on that way. On the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe. Atchison! Smoke rising round the bend. Crank and edge, you know what you're gonna meet up, friend. Folks around these parts get the time of day. On the action, big and Santa Fe. gentlemen, a brisk report from Kenny Delma. There's an easy way to get more pleasure from tea, a more gracious way to enjoy it. That's in Tenderleaf Tea Balls. Modern, convenient, better in every way. Tenderleaf Tea Balls are first choice, the favorite of the American housewife. Yes, Mrs. America prefers Tenderleaf Tea Balls and her standards are the highest in the world. The cup quality of your tea is of first importance. Its fragrance, flavor, and all-around goodness as you lift the cup to your lips. To provide that, Tenderleaf Tea Balls are made with famous for flavor Tenderleaf brand tea. Always supremely delicious. The individual packets of tasteless filter paper add convenience, ease of handling, simplicity, and speed. When you want a cup of quick comfort in a hurry, just pop a Tenderleaf Tea Ball in your cup, zip in boiling water, and there's superb tea. Quick comfort when you need it most. So for every good reason, ask your grocer for Tenderleaf brand tea ball. Maestro Al Goodman has just played I Wish from the song I Wish I Knew. (laughs) Mr. Goodman's band numbers have something in common with his horses. They never finish either. And now, uh, say, Portland, will you put down the red herringbone carpet for our guest? Who's coming tonight? Well, we have a great surprise tonight, Portland. Last week, as you possibly read in the papers, a New York policeman made his first appearance as an opera star at the Civic Center. He was a great success. Now, tonight, we have another unknown singing sensation. John Charles Muckinfuss. Does he work for the city, too? Oh, yes, for many years. John Charles Muckinfuss is known as the singing street cleaner. Well, where did you find him? Well, I was going down to see that new picture, Guest Wife, at the Criterion. Claudette Colbert is in it, and Donna Michi is also in the picture, and he doesn't invent anything. And I thought it might be a novelty to go in and see the picture. And as I arrived at the front of the theater, from behind a large can, I heard a beautiful voice. It was John Charles... Oh, this must be Mr. Muckenfuss now. Well, get ready. You take his broom and helmet, Portland. Okay. Come in. <laughs> Uh, friends, uh, is this the Tenderleaf tea program? Yes. Oh, it is? Oh, that's peachy. Oh, uh, 
<laughs> then you must be Fred Allen. Yes, that's yeah. true. Well, if you're Fred Allen, you're just the man I want to see, and, well, well I don't exactly uh, want to see you either because you're not very pretty to look now, at. Now, wait a minute. Just wait a minute. Wait a minute, bud. Who are you? Well, I, I am Ursula Swing. Uh, yes, Ursula Swing. And I am a lawyer. You're a lawyer? Yes. Uh, do you want to feel my briefcase? Well, no, no, no. <laughs> Take your word well, for I, it. I am, I am a lawyer, all right. And my last case uh, was Delt versus the Acme Poultry Market. The yes, Acme, yes, all right. Was, yes. And my client, Mrs. Delt, was buying a live chicken, and after the chicken had been weighed, it laid an egg. So what? Well, uh, the poultry market claimed the egg, and so I, I sued, and the court ruled caveat emptor, and so the egg was put back in the chicken. The egg was put back. Well, all right, so the egg is back in the chicken. What has all this got to do with me? Uh, well, you're, you're in grave trouble, Mr. A. Allen. Yeah, not exactly grave either, because I don't think it'll send you that far. No. But, uh, no, but my client is, is suing. Your client? Yes, Charlie McCarthy. Uh, tonight, uh, you appeared on Edgar Burden's program. Under protest, yes, that's and I true. didn't. I, and you said... This, <laughs> this makes no sense, then. No, now, it, no, it said... <laughs> and, and you said uh, too much, and you said some very nasty things about Charlie, and you've just driven that little boy into a tizzy. Oh, I have, huh? Uh, yes, and, and you're a very bad boy. Now, look here, twin. <laughs> You and Charlie McCarthy don't scare me. I'll fight this thing through to the Supreme Court. And if that doesn't work, I'll go right over Frankfurter's head, straight to Mr. District Attorney. Well, uh, you can, as far as I'm concerned, you can go to, uh, straight to uh, now, uh, any, uh, no, anywhere you want. But I was here to, ser- to serve you with a, a subpoena. Uh, <laughs> and uh, if you, you had better, uh, you, you are ordered to appear in, in court next Sunday, and you had better be there too, Sparty. If you had anything left over from the other program, put it in here, you know. We can all be... <laughs> I'm supposed to appear in court, and what happens if I don't show up? Well, if you don't show up, uh, you know what happened to Pierre Laval? Boom, boom. Viva la Charlie McCarthy. <laughs> Mr. Well, Allen. look at this summons here. It says trial will be held on this program next Sunday. Why that little wooden run? I ought to pull his legs off and make lollipop sticks out of him. I ought to go back over there again. This must be John Charles Muckenfuss, the singing street Say, cleaner. It probably is. Come in. Well, who are you, son? I'm Frank Sinatra. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I haven't time to talk now, son. I'm expecting John Charles Muckenfuss, the singing street cleaner. Well, Mr. Muckenfuss sent me over. See, he can't make it. He got an emergency call. A street cleaner getting an emergency call? On 10th Avenue. It was a rush job. (laughs) Dad, here we are on the air, and our guest star is over on 10th Avenue performing a broomectomy. Well, Mr. Allen, Mr. Muckenfuss said maybe I could take his place. Well, I'm sorry, son. You know, this isn't one of those quiz programs where any schnook can come in off the street (laughs) and take over the microphone. We only use stars. Yes, sir. It's uh, nothing personal, you understand? Oh, I understand, sir. We can only use people with talent. I have talent. Really? Who said so? My mother. Oh. (laughs) Well, tell me, would uh, would you step just a little closer to the microphone, son, if you will? I'm sorry, is this all right? Uh, just a little farther back, if you will, please. See, I don't seem to get the hang of it. No, it's a little difficult. Have you been on the radio before, son? Well, yes, I've been on once or twice. Oh, really? Yes. What did you say your name was again? Sinatra. 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 You're not related to Sam Sinatra. <laughs> no. I used to know a Sam Sinatra up in New Rochelle. He was a glass blower in an optician's up there. <laughs> If people came in with dirty glasses and couldn't see to get out of the store, Sam would blow on the glasses. And make... <laughs> no, I don't know Sam. <laughs> no, I, I don't know him. I'm Frank Sinatra. You're Frank Sinatra. And you say you're in radio? Yes, I'm on for old gold cigarettes. Oh, are you the guy who squeezes the honey out of the apple on that side? <laughs> No, you see, I do the thing. Frank Sinatra. See, you weren't formerly with the Yacht Club, boy. <laughs> I see a, a little brine on your lapel there. No, uh, I had sour pickle for lunch. Oh, did you? You shouldn't eat pickles with those short arms, son. <laughs> the dill drips on you. See, I have the same trouble with sodas, you know. I have a short neck and I can't reach the straws. Oh, really? You could... Well, how do you drink a soda? I pour it out, pour the soda out on the counter and lap it up. Oh, sweet. <laughs> I lost that up. I, <laughs> I have short teeth. Every time I bite a hot dog, all I get is a mouthful of mustard. I, 
You know, once I knew a guy with a... Once I knew a guy with a short nose. He couldn't smell anything unless he put his face in it. Oh, really? Well, this is all mighty, mighty interesting, Mr. Uh... Sinatra. Oh, Sinatra. Gosh, it's going, to, it's going to disappoint millions of music lovers. John Charles Muck and Fuss, the singing street cleaner, not here. I wonder how long he'll be over there on 10th Avenue. Uh, he said it looked like a long session. Long session, eh? The cowboys from Rodeo are parading. <laughs> yeah. Muck and Fuss... Muck and Fuss may be tied up all night. Uh huh. Gad, and right here in the program, we're supposed to have a song. <clears throat> I can sing a number, Mr. Allen. Well, all right, song. We're stuck. You've got me over a barrel. What do you want to sing? Uh, how about it might as well be spring? All right, but uh, don't drag it out, son. I'll try my best. <laughs> As a willow in a windstorm I'm as jumpy as a puppet on a string I'd say that I had spring fever But I know it isn't spring I am starry-eyed and vaguely discontented like a nightingale without a song to sing Why should I have spring fever When it isn't even spring I keep wishing I were somewhere else Walking down a strange new street Hearing words that I have never heard From a girl I've yet to meet I'm as busy as a spider spinning daydreams I'm as giddy as a baby on a string I haven't seen a crocus or a rosebud Or a robin on the wing But I feel so gay In a melancholy way That it might as well be spring It might as well I didn't even recognize you before. Why didn't you tell me? Gosh, how time flies. To think that I started you on your career. Yeah, I remember when I came to you for advice. Oh, you wanted to know whether you should take up singing or open a haberdasher store in Kansas City. Yeah. And you told me to stick to singing. Ah, who knows? If you had opened that haberdasher store in Kansas City, today you might be president. Oh, I couldn't be president, Fred. No. I can't play the piano. Oh, that's... A... Well, tell me, Frank... <laughs> That singing you just did, is that the type of thing you're doing on the radio? Yes. Don't you think my style has possibilities, Fred? Yes, Frank, but you have to think of the future. You know you're not getting any younger, son. Mm -hmm. New boys are coming along. Perry Como, Dick Hames, Carmen Lombardo, Frank Munn, and the others. <laughs> I think I see what you mean, Fred. Uh, where will I be 50 years from now? That's probably what your insurance company would like to know. But if we're going to stay in radio, Frank, there's only one kind of a program we can do when we're old men. Fred, you mean... Hillbilly. Mm -hmm. Frank, hillbilly singers don't ripen until they're 80. I know I've been in warm studios with... <laughs> but, Fred... 
Gee whiz, Sinatra hillbilly after all. Ah, don't worry, Frank. I can fix everything. I know the king of the hillbillies, Zeke Manor. Ah, I can see it all, Frankie. Fifty years from now, 1995. We're broadcasting from a little two-watch station in Nutley, New Jersey. You and I are standing there in our bare feet, our, uh, with our floppy hats... Zeke Manor steps to the microphone and says, Howdy, folks! Zeke Manor's and his happy hillbillies are on the air! Let her rip! <laughs> howdy, howdy, friends and neighbors! This is Zeke Manor's and the whole gang. The Hoosier Coal Talk, the Cool Creek Choir, Uncle Zeb, Louie Bell, the Hokey Mountain Boys, and those hillbilly twins, Happy Sinatra and Uncle Hezzy Allen! <laughs> First, I want you to meet Lulu Bell. Yahoo! Howdy, folks! These shoes is a killing me! <laughs> and here's the Coon Creek Choir. Howdy, <laughs> And here they be, them scarecrows fresh from the cornfields, Happy Sinatra and Uncle Hezzy Allen. <laughs> Howdy, Pappy. Well, howdy, Uncle Hezzy. Tell me, Pappy, how many hairs onto a pig's face? Next time we shave, count them. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle, tell me, what has four legs and flies? A dead whore. No, no, our table at dinner time. <laughs> well, folks, <laughs> now that we've laughed ourselves sick, <laughs> Happy Sinatra and Uncle Hezzy Allen sing, Open Up Them Pearly Gates. Listen here, all you sinners. If you want to get to heaven, heaven, better get down on your knees and pray. All you gambling skinners, better quit saying 7-Eleven. Get yourself prepared for judgment day. Open up them pearly gates. Open up them pearly gates. Open up them pearly gates for me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When you hear that trumpet sound, I'll be coming home at last. Open up them pearly gates for me. a word or two. Whatever concerns the family table is important to us all, and here's a good example. Remember the letters FME for flavor, nutrition, economy. Blue Bonnet Margarine gives all three flavor, nutrition, economy. Think of it, not just one, not just two. Blue Bonnet Margarine gives you all three. You get flavored, delicious flavor, so fresh, delicate, and country sweet that it makes other foods taste twice as good. Delicious Blue Bonnet is a real food approved by nutrition experts, rich in food energy and in vitamin A, too. Remember, Blue Bonnet is the margarine that gives all three Flavor, nutrition, economy. Ask for it tomorrow. Thank you, Kenny. This is Fred Allen saying good night, ladies and gentlemen. Our guest next week will be Edgar Bergen and the biggest court trial. This is the National Broadcasting. Mm.